Hello, and welcome to this episode of Create a Life You Love. I've known almost my entire life that everybody has a purpose, a path they're supposed to follow, something that brings them so much passion and joy when they're doing it. They might not know what it is early on, and it might switch. You might start with one career and go to another, but we know there is something, there's a longing inside of us that makes us want to follow a certain path. And that's what this show is about, taking your purpose and your passion and turning it into a career. Today my guest is Amy Hugh, who is an acupuncturist and a very good one at that, as you'll see in just a moment. Hi Amy, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks. It's wonderful to have you here today. It's good to be here. So Amy, when did you first hear about acupuncture? Um, I was in my 20s and I had had um, migraines. Okay. And a chiropractor suggested looking into acupuncture. Excellent. And then how often, did, first, did it help with the migraines? It did. The first, Good. the very first treatment, um, after about 10 minutes, the migraine was gone and I felt definitely different and I think a lot better than I probably ever felt. So I was kind of blown away by 10 minutes of acupuncture. Okay. So for people who are watching who might not know what acupuncture is exactly, uh, what's a brief description of acupuncture? Um, a system of healing that's about 5,000 years old, um, originally developed by we believe Tibetan monks that were using some rudimentary sharpened stones and stuff to stimulate points and documenting what these points did. Um, now it's evolved into needles that are as thin as a couple of human hairs or a cat's whisker and you insert these into um, precise points or nearly precise points since they're not always the exact same on every person and um, they stimulate the energy within the body to move and um, hopefully solve problems. Amazing. So now you went to school and you're an acupuncturist. Now where did you go to school? Midwest College in Racine, Wisconsin. Excellent. Now I am going to, um, Amy is going to now uh, do a demonstration of acupuncture on me. I've had acupuncture before. It's extremely relaxing, but we wanted to show just how comfortable and easy acupuncture is. So I'm just gonna move my hand forward now and um, she's gonna start the process of what acupuncture would be. I'm just gonna put my little questions right there. I just wash my hands before I touch a patient because I may have been touching paper or something else. And then this is a clean field that isn't contaminated. Swab the point one time. Put this in the garbage and Use a sterile needle. This goes in the garbage. And then there's just a small tap. And I seriously did not even feel that go in. That Place is it. amazing. Now at that point, what are some of the things this point stimulates? This one um, would remove heat and move chi. So chi stagnation is a big cause of many problems within the body, especially pain. Um, and basically your chi should be moving. Your chi okay. should be going through the meridians as, it, as like cars on a highway and should just be flowing and not running into each other and not stopping. And um, when it stops anywhere or slows down or there's a jam, there's stagnation. And removing that stagnation um, generally changes the state of the body or the state of an illness or pathology in a beneficial way. Excellent. So I'm also going, I'm going to move my hand over here. You can see with acupuncture, I can move it. It's not painful. It actually has no feeling whatsoever. I'm gonna put my hand up here because she's also going to needle a point on my foot as I, in such a ladylike way, bring my big old foot up here. Now this foot has, um, two plates and 13 pins in it. And I was explaining to Amy, when I run, 
the next day there's some um, pain with it. So she's gonna hopefully, she's gonna needle me and move some chi in this area also. Right. So go ahead and pick a point wherever you want. Well, if I use oh, this nice. one, if I, if I use this one, that's a liver point and the liver meridian um, often helps resolve pain. Um, so when we're looking at pain, chi stagnation, um, the liver meridian is a good, usually a good choice. Nice. And this just benefits so many things. And I just have to say, I'm already becoming so relaxed and so comfortable. I'm just kind of zoning here already. And that is one of the things acupuncture does. Every time I've gone in for acupuncture, I just become so zoned out. It's like better than a massage, actually. So we so. could needle near the pin if that's comfortable, unless you think that's a little scary. No, Does that's that scare good. You? I'm good. Surprised you with that one. That's good. So this one's not going in as easily, that, but it's still... Yeah, that's a plate there. <laughs> okay. I'm like, there's a plate behind that Does, skin did, there. Did that hurt? No, that's good. You it's good the way nervous? it is right now. Okay. Yeah. So that's it. That's getting needled. It's just that simple. So I'm going to ask you, Amy, now, um, what can acupuncture help? I know it can help with anxiety and fear. What are some of the other reasons people would come to you for an acupuncture session? Uh, the biggest reason that people come for acupuncture is pain. Okay. Um, another reason would be insomnia, um, stomach problems like nausea, or you know other bowel and stomach problems like colitis or um, irritable bowel. A lot of times, we can help the body relax so that those things aren't as bothersome. Right. And some people go into remission completely. Um, there's also neurological issues, like um, you can address paralysis. Um, there's never any promises, but sometimes if it's a temporary neurological issue, you can reverse it. If it's a new, the newer the issue, the better the success with acupuncture. Excellent. Now I know people can also use acupuncture to help stop smoking and for heart conditions. Correct, yes. Um, yeah. To stop smoking, there's a, if you can come more, more frequently at the beginning, it generally helps a lot. Um, and also institute a lot of other behavioral commitments. Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's not that acupuncture itself cures smoking, but acupuncture is a great support for, for um, quitting smoking and for a lot of health conditions. Absolutely. Now, the very first time I went for acupuncture, I was so nervous and um, that I'm going to say this wrong. They put the uh, the thing on my foot, the maki or ma machi? moxa. Moxa. That's it. And I'm going to tell you within a few seconds. I they uh, I was so like in my happy place. So is that, if somebody is nervous, they can start with the moxa, and then you're just, you're in like this dream state place and nothing, mm -hmm. like being needled after that was nothing. And that's, that's sometimes a term that people use, getting needled mm -hmm. is a term people use um, for acupuncture, also for the actual process, right? Right, and there's a, there are also some, there's some auricular points, which is in the ear. Okay. If somebody's comfortable with that, um, you know, you can stimulate the points in the ear either with a needle or with a tool and that can relax them. Um, sometimes just having the conversation, turning on some soft music, putting the lights down. Um, getting through that first needle if somebody has anxiety is usually, um, you know, the solution a solution to the problem. But if we can't even get to that needle, sure, there are, there are accessory techniques to use. Um, you know, there's a, there's tween on massage that's part of acupuncture training. Um, so, it, you know, almost any kind of touch if they're, if it's appropriate to the treatment and helpful to the patient can help resolve some of that. Right, absolutely. So I'm, just a little update here on the needling. I am so completely relaxed right now. Like I'm like thinking in my head, you should look at your questions. You should ask the questions. And I'm just like, oh, nah. I'm just so comfortable right now. So um, 
let's talk about how you determine how many needles to use on a person because somebody might come in and say everything's wrong with me just put them any and is more better or more is less or what's the philosophy on that um, there are different philosophies but in general less is more so you know if keep it to probably an average of 10 needles that's really beneficial um, there's a lot of practitioners that don't and they're not doing it wrong um, but you know I think that like 70 or 80 needles is, is a lot, as we learned in school. Um, we probably did, you know, 10 to 20 needles per treatment when possible. There are some conditions that benefit from a lot more needles, um, especially say you're doing the whole spine, there's a certain type of treatment, um, you're kind of following the whole spine, that's a lot more needles. What does that help? Um, the paraspinal pain. Okay. So relaxing that whole, the very thick muscles next to the spine. Okay. Um, and that, you know, takes, it can take more needles. I don't, I don't think everybody prefers it. I, you know, there's all different philosophies and theories within the practice. So uh, somebody may be watching that says that's a, you know, that's a terrible treatment. That's not per, per textbook or whatever. But, you know, when, when I've seen results with it with people, it's something I'm going to keep in my book of bag right. tricks. And for just like every treatment might not be right for every person, mm -hmm. but there might be a person that this treatment is perfect for. Right. If somebody's frail or weak or young um, or very old, uh, less needles is definitely the answer and less time. Okay. If somebody is bigger, heavier, stronger, um, young, not too young, but you know, youthful and strong, um, and their treatment requires or can benefit from more needles and more time, then that's possible. The sicker a person is, the less needles and less time. And also if you're sick with like upper respiratory, you keep the needles above the waist. Um, whereas if you're not sick with an upper re respiratory illness, then you can choose needles upper and lower. Okay, perfect. So now how long, once the needles are in, how long do they stay in? How long um, does it normally, uh, once a person is needled, what's the approximate amount of time the needles will stay in while they're lying on the table? Uh, an average treatment's about 20 minutes. Okay, and then um, do you? If you don't fall asleep. If you don't fall asleep. Forget what's going on, yeah, then and 20 then minutes. And is it like massage where they turn over and then they get needled in the back, or is it just the one side? Not, uh, that wouldn't be a standard format, but that can happen. Okay. There can be um, a pull the needles and flip you over and do the other side. So it kind of depends on conditions. It depends on the person's constitution and um, the time that the office has to do it. Oh, perfect. Perfect. So I'm going to go to the next question now. I'm so zoned right now. <laughs> um, if you want to really be zoned out and relax, this is such a perfect uh, thing to do. So you talked a little bit about age with acupuncture. Mm -hmm. So what would be, uh, is, you mentioned children. Are mm -hmm. children really uh, good candidates for acupuncture? Um, they can be. Uh, generally, they don't need to have a 20-minute treatment. They may not even need to have a 10-minute treatment. Mm -hmm. um, they may, they, their chi is more accessible um, they're more receptive to treatments, so sometimes just a needle in and out is enough to treat them for their condition. Um, but generally, I guess you pay attention to the patient, and if you put the needle in and they scream, you take the needle out because you don't want them flailing or causing any problems. But right. even just accessing that point a little bit can... Be helpful. Mm -hmm. Now. If a child has, let's say, ADD or a, an eating disorder, this could be very helpful for them? Definitely. Um, there's definitely some auricular points that I would, I would use for those, those type of conditions. But, um, you know, the body points, too, are beneficial in helping them relax so that they, they feel more control over their issues. Okay, excellent. And then once you've... Um, needled a person like myself um, in the environment they're just lying down and relaxing do you use a massage table or a 
their uh, massage table or a zero gravity chair. Um, a massage table is the most typical. Okay, perfect, perfect. With a clean sheet or clean paper underneath them. Good. So what's the most typical thing other than pain that people come in for acupuncture for? Um, pain, migraines. Um, migraines is a type of pain though, so probably I think anxiety. Yeah, that's it really, so really calms huge. people down. Like you're saying, it's calming you down and you didn't have anxiety to begin with. So somebody with anxiety, if you can just bring them down a notch, can sometimes feel like a world of difference. So that's pretty magical. Now, once somebody's been needled and the needles are taken out, how long can they expect the result to last? That definitely varies by patient, yeah. but... Um, at the very beginning, it doesn't last as long as after multiple treatments. Um, for some conditions, it's suggested to come a few times a week in the very beginning and then right. start stretching it out to once a week and then all the way down to once a month. And then sometimes those treatments can last in between those appointments. But um, there's not really one answer to that. I think that like for me, a uh, treatment will last a minimum of 8 to 12 hours, which may not sound like a lot, but if you have any kind of condition that's bothering you, a period of relief is really beneficial to give you that hope and give you that um, feeling of not having the condition so that you're, you and your own mind and body can kind of draw that out yourself. And that, that's, I, it may sound kind of hokey, but I usually instruct patients when you, if you're feeling relief right now, kind of capture that, uh, capture that in your mind. And it's not the same as taking a picture of it, but keep a record of it and see how long you can kind of hold that picture. Um, and if you lose sight of that picture, get the picture back and see if you right. can kind of recreate that pain relief that you had because some people can really do that. And my goal isn't to have them come back to me and be my patient for life. My goal is to help them so that they know how to help themselves. And then they can come back as as they want, not Ab as they need. Absolutely, absolutely. So now, Amy, you practice another healing modality called Access Bar, correct? Yep, Access Bars is, a, is um, um, a method of healing through access consciousness, and it helps to remove um, like past belief systems and um, past, I guess, negativity, they call it, um, that has accumulated in our consciousness that is no longer necessary for our existence. So it's just kind of cluttering us in our mind. Okay, so, and how, how do you do that? How is Access Bar performed? Um, generally, a person's laying on a massage table. They can be anywhere, though. They can be sitting in a chair. They can mm -hmm. be laying on a couch. Um, and there are points on the head. There are 32 points on the head. Um, you start with the back of the neck and the forehead. Um, you go down to the feet and you touch the hands and you go back to points on the head and you're holding different points on the head for up to 90 minutes. Um, and I mean, the, the long and the short of it, the result is most people feel just super relaxed. Okay, excellent, excellent. And then with Access Bar, um, I want to reach. Uh, uh, I know it can help with some of our past, you, you mentioned like past lives. Um, approximately how, I know at one time you'd given me a number of mm -hmm. up to, I'm so relaxed I can't formulate a question, <laughs> folks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this stuff is Yay. awesome, by the way. <laughs> so please elaborate the on, on the, the whole... Um, well, the system of healing describes it as um, e each session can remove up to 10,000 years of negativity. Okay, perfect. Um, I kind of took that out of some of my flyers because I think that, um, especially in the area I'm in, sometimes that can kind of Not push people away yeah, if they don't believe in past lives or whatever else. Um, just let them know that it removes negativity and helps them feel really relaxed. And if they want to try it, they can try it. Yeah. And then more of the one-on-one -on -one conversations would discuss the technical aspects if people are open and interested in that. Because um, I don't want to... I don't want to deprive somebody of it because, and scare them away by that, but um, it's pretty exciting to me if, you know, if we right. potentially have past lives, we can 
remove 10,000 years of it each treatment, that's, that's pretty cool. So Absolutely. just keep getting treatments and giving treatments until we reach whatever number of years we think we've had right. in reincarnation, <laughs> which who knows, but exactly. I don't know. I think too, if you, it, um, by not stating it, if you're removing it and the person doesn't know that, it's not a trick, it's just removing stuff that is blocking them. Mm -hmm. And we, as, as people, we, don't, we think we know what's blocking us, but then we work on that and we're like, okay, I worked on that, it's not that. So sometimes we need a system that just goes in and can work on it, mm -hmm. start removing it without us knowing all the details of it. I think as people, we can get caught up in the details and because we think it's this and we must work with this and it's, it, it could be something completely different, right? Yep, that's definitely things, uh, th that's definitely something that we've talked about as um, people involved with access bars. Um, some of the people have said that it seems like it works better if we leave the story out. Uh, sometimes the patient or the practitioner wants to talk about the story and that that's not wrong, but um, as you know, by telling our story over and over, especially if it's negative, you kind of lock that in place. And so, you reinforce it. Yep. Yeah, so instead of locking that story in place, we just want to go, let's remove negativity. Yeah. And then let's just remove it. So hopefully let's then that story, some people have described the result of access bars as um, a memory they had before that was negative that they kept repeating, they just couldn't really remember anymore. So, I mean, of course you can recreate that memory again if you start thinking about it and mm -hmm. replace that into your mind, but removing that from your immediate consciousness can free up a lot of space to accomplish positive things. So what was the process of learning the process or the procedure mm -hmm. of Access Bar? It's a one-day class okay. with a certified facilitator, but I, I had um, probably five or six sessions with that practitioner before um, before deciding to take the class. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then when you're treating somebody, um, do you know, I mean, I know you say keep the story out of it, but what are some of their uh, like testimonials, what they say afterwards, after experiencing it? Um, the people that I've treated said that they just feel so relaxed and centered and balanced. Okay. And then, they, again, they can't remember that negative process. Now, does this also, does Access Bar also help with children? Definitely. Um, children may be pulling in, you know, past life memories or picking up, uh, picking up energy from other people and, you know, it can help them feel more centered and calm. Yeah, I've, I've said this before. In, um, children often remember their past lives when they're younger. Mm -hmm. As we get older, we forget it. And in, I believe it's England, if you, if you Google YouTube past lives England, there will be um, all these children telling their stories of past lives. And, and their name and where they lived. And they look this up and it's accurate. And it, it fits, it's like, oh yeah, there was a guy named that that did live there. And it, that just, that amazes me, you know. And you know, I'm not trying to change anybody's mind if they do or don't believe in past lives. I just think it's a very fascinating situation when mm -hmm. something like that comes up. It is. It is, absolutely. So Amy, is there anything else you would like anyone to, like, like us to know about your work, um, either acupuncture or access bar? Oh, not necessarily unless, I mean, I can remove the needles. Okay, let's start with the foot so I can take this off okay. the table. Oh, there okay. you go. And felt and nothing. And then there's a... And, and felt nothing. <laughs> and now I can just kind of get my foot off the table there and then this point. There we go. And again, there was no feeling going in, no feeling coming out. Um, when done correctly, you really do not feel that needle going mm -hmm. in. You have a knowing it's happening because you might be watching it, but don't feel it at all, which is very, very amazing. I love that. So how often do you get needles? 
Um, I don't get needled as much as I want to, but I would love to get needled probably once a week um, by somebody else. Um, yes. I'll needle myself three or four times a week, <clears throat> um, especially in my ears. It's just really good for keeping, you know, for staying calm, staying centered, and it's quick in the ears. Quick and easy. Yeah. So that's excellent. Very perfect. So Amy, I'm going to have your website listed below. I want to thank you so much for being a guest here today. It's just been such an honor and what a great abundant amount of information that you've brought for this and hopefully somebody who's watching will be able to say, I think that could help me. Now, uh, one thing uh, we didn't bring up is acupuncture can also help weight. Oh, definitely. People that want to lose weight, it's again, not a not the only solution, but it's a good support to people that are trying to lose weight because you can remove um, some help reduce edema and reduce cravings, um, reduce addictions. Like food addiction is a big addiction, so um, can help people with that. We can also put some tax or seeds in the ears and then that'll remind you you can stimulate those points and then um, you know, that's something you can do instead of eating when you say, oh my gosh, I'm so hungry. And then you'll have something that you can touch to, you know, hopefully that would reduce the craving. Absolutely, that's wonderful. There are so many options for people, um, holistic options, natural options that people can use to help, whether it be weight, smoking, any of the other things. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Amy, so much for being such an incredible guest today. And thank you for watching this episode of Create a Life You Love. If you would like to connect with Amy Hugh, her website is right underneath here. Go ahead, write that down, connect with her. If you'd like to connect with me, now my website is right underneath there. You can also connect with either one of us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and a number of other um, social media outlets. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Create a Life You Love. Thanks and have an amazing day. Bye-bye.